Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to run Visual Studio Code on a remote server or on the cloud. Now, a lot of you will be wondering why exactly one would want to do this, and I'll get to that shortly. So I've been using this for about a week now, and it really, really is revolutionary. And that's primarily why I wanted to share it with you. All right, so uh, I'm just going to show you the GitHub repository here. Uh, the service we're going to be using is called Code Server. All right, so you can view their website at uh, coder.com and you can see that Coda is an online IDE serving Visual Studio Code, which is absolutely fantastic. So you can go ahead and take a look at the uh, the description here. So Coda is an open source remote development environment uh, serving Visual Studio Code, uh, accelerate your workflow and surpass the capabilities of your local development machine. All right, so essentially what this is doing is moving Visual Studio Code onto your browser. Now, you might be asking, well, why is that important? Or what, what really is making this any special? Well, if you go right to the bottom here, and uh, I'll be showing you how to run it really easily, so you don't have to use Docker if you don't want to anyway. So uh, you can see the huge advantages here is, first of all, it'll tell you that code server is Visual Studio Code running on a remote server accessible through the browser. All right, you then have the advantages here. So you can code on your Chromebook, tablet, and laptop with a consistent development environment. If you have a Windows or Mac workstation, you can more easily develop for Linux, all right? So it's giving you a bit of everything. So if you are using a Chromebook uh, where you don't have Visual Studio Code, or if you are on an Android tablet or uh, an iOS tablet, uh, and you want to use or you want to use a, uh, an integrated development environment, you can, simp you can access it through your browser. And I'll show you that in a second. So uh, it also allows you, because you're setting this up on a, uh, on a cloud hosting platform, you can use either DigitalOcean, um, you can also use AWS, whatever works for you. I'm personally going to show you how to do this with, uh, with DigitalOcean. So you can see it allows you to take advantage of the large cloud servers to speed up test compilation downloads and more. So depending on the uh, the speed of the, the server you, you choose uh, in terms of the, the system requirements or the specifications, you get a much faster uh, com compilation time. Of course, with the internet speed, you get much faster downloads. So that really works as well. Now, I personally have found great use uh, with this on my tablet and on my laptop where I really don't want to run a fully fledged uh, integrated development environment on my laptop. It's more of a netbook and I really, really enjoyed having this being run on the browser. So again, it tells you right over here, preserves battery life when you're on the go. All intensive computation runs on your server and you're no longer running excess instances of Chrome, which I think is beautiful. So again, here is a screenshot of how it works and I'll be showing you how to set it up. All right, so as I've mentioned, I'll be setting up my particular instance on a digital ocean and I'll share my specifications with you. Uh, I also have a referral link if you want to use that to get a month's credit or I think about five to ten dollars credit. So you can essentially set up a server for one month for free. Uh, if you want to use uh, AWS, that's perfectly fine. It will work just the same. All right. So we want to take a look at the um, uh, if we just take a look right over here, the releases, because uh, I want to show you that uh, you don't really need to compile it or you, you don't need to compose it with Docker. You can instead uh, just you can copy the link right over here. Uh, but before we do that, we actually have to set up our instance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head over to DigitalOcean and I'm going to specify Ubuntu 18.04 64-bit. Uh, I personally prefer that. Uh, in regards to the plan, you have your starter, general purpose, and CPU optimized. Uh, you can run this uh, regardless of, uh, of the specifications. I prefer using a 2 gigabyte uh, RAM uh, 1 CPU uh, specification, which is about $10 a month, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so again, you can, go and, uh, you can go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the specifications right there if you're interested. Uh, you can also enable backups if you want to. Uh, I personally am just, just simply just going to set my location as London, which is the closest uh, to me right now. Uh, I'm not uh, specifying anything extra. I'm not really using IP IPv6. You might want to turn on monitoring if that's what you want. I'm not going to add an SSH key because I'm simply using this as a demonstration. So I'm just going to rename the host name to Visual Studio Code right over here. And it's going to be under the project or the organization Hackersploit. All right, you can also increase the amount of droplets you want to create for this if you want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit create and I'll get back to you when this is created.
All right, so this is almost uh, about to be completed. It's uh, currently setting it up and I'll, I'll get to how we can essentially start using it. So uh, usually DigitalOcean will send you the password that you, you, you can log in with, the root password. Uh, of course, the access is done via the, uh, the onboard uh, terminal that they do offer you or the console, uh, or you can use SSH, which is what I prefer. All right, so we're just gonna wait for this to complete and hopefully they can send me the, uh, the email here. Here we are, fantastic, we've got the password. I'll just copy that. I have my email open here and we can log in. All right, so we wanna copy the IPv4 address. Now I'm gonna be using uh, Putty to, uh, as my SSH client. So I'm gonna enter the address right over here. I'm gonna change the appearance so we can actually get a better font size uh, so that you guys can see what's going on. So I'm just gonna open this up and I'm gonna hit yes. I'm gonna copy the password one more time because I know I did have the IP on my clipboard. Uh, whoops, sorry about that. Anyway, I'm just I'm gonna wipe this. Uh, I'm just I'm gonna delete this server so it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna hit enter. Uh, it's gonna prompt me for the current password. I'm just gonna paste that in one more time. Let me enter new password here, and we're ready to go. All right, excellent. So we can get started now. So uh, there we are. We are in the root directory. The first thing I'm gonna do is just to keep everything organized because we will need a folder for our project. So it's better that you just create it right now. So I'm just gonna call, uh, I'm gonna say Visual Studio Code. Uh, we'll just call it Visual Studio Code. And we'll just hit enter and we'll move into Visual Studio Code. You can also make another folder for the projects. And uh, of course you can sort it out however you want. I'm simply giving you a basic organizational structure and you'll see why. All right, so now that we're, we're essentially done, what we need to do is we need to download uh, this right over here, the tar file. So I'm just gonna copy the uh, the address right over here. And of course we can use wget or you can use curl if you want to. And I'm just gonna paste in the link right over here. It should download it immediately uh, as that's one of the advantages of using the cloud hosting or the cloud, uh, yeah, the cloud hosting providers. So I'm just gonna clear the terminal here. And if we list the files, we have the tar file there. So tar xvf and we want to hit a code right over here and we want to extract that so we're going to give that a few seconds and there we are we have the executable within code server so there we are fantastic and of course you can move this to the opt directory if you want to do that uh, i personally just recommend leaving it on the root unless you're using this server so for uh, for something else all right so uh, right over here we have the uh, the binary file or the executable so we're just going to run it and I'm gonna hit enter and that's all you have to do. Now, uh, you will realize that it gives you the, the host and the port. So to access this, you simply need the server IP or if you have it linked to a domain, uh, you have it mapped to a domain via your DNS settings or your DNS server, then again, you can use the domain uh, and you can essentially map that particular port, but the port is 8443. And it tells you how to essentially access this. So the, it is the IP address, the, low, uh, the IP address of the instance and the port for 8443. So let's do that right now. So I'm just gonna go back here, copy that right over here and we'll open that in a new tab. And I'm just gonna paste it in and we're using 8443 hit enter and that should open up here. It's gonna prompt us, uh, uh, well, this is primarily because we don't have an SSL certificate. Uh, you, you can do that really, really simply. If you want me to make a video now to do that for servers in general, uh, we can do that, all right? So now it's gonna prompt you for your server password and your server password is displayed right over here. So again, you can just copy that and that's primarily what I'm gonna do and we'll just hit, uh, we'll just paste in the password right over here and uh, there we are, we, can, we should be logged in and we should be able to access Visual Studio Code and you can access, uh, you can access this on any device and uh, you know, get started editing, save your project, compile, debug, etc., etc. Now there are a few issues that uh, you will experience with, uh, with Code Server as it is uh, not perfect yet and uh, if we take a look at the issues here, primarily one of the issues is with a few extensions and the debugging, so again, uh, so uh, again, this is all to do with visuals to uh, the VS code extensions and debugging them. All right. So that is primarily the main issue here. Apologies for that. Uh, so there you are. You can see that uh, you can essentially create a new projects. Just give it a, a while to load up and you can also install your extensions, etc, etc. So if I wanted to go to a new file, sorry, a new file right over here. And I wanted to save that as I can go and I can specify the directory. So Visual Studio, root Visual Studio code. And of course I specified or I created the projects folder, which is right over there. So I can say projects and I will call this index.html uh, and I can hit save. 
and there we are fantastic we'll give that a few seconds to load up and we should have the html file right over here now we already have emmet i'm guessing uh if you have already have Emmet, there, there we are, fantastic. All right, so you get the idea. You can use Visual Studio Code within your browser. You can access it on any device. And this is, I made this video particularly for the for the guys who are, are running this uh, or, or who are developers and they have Chromebooks and would like to utilize it for a bit of development. So there you are. All right, so that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or on the forum at hackersploit.org. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace, guys.